Hello, welcome back to the channel. It is Dan Nocturne Knives coming at you today with a quick review of this knife, the Sincut San Angelo. I have this knife in courtesy of Sincut. They sent it around through the Apex Pass Around group. Big thank you to Sincut for doing that. That was very nice of you. With that said, this knife is supplied by the manufacturer, although it is not mine to keep. I am sending it along later today. So hopefully that hasn't influenced my review here. I'm not getting paid to do this, and I'm not even keeping the knife. Just some disclosures for you there. So getting into the review, this is a budget offering from Sincut, which is the budget division of Civivi, which is the budget division of We Knives. It's a little bit complicated, but this is like the budget version of the budget version of Wii. They're sold mostly through Amazon, although I think they are on a few regular dealers and distributors now. But it started as kind of an Amazon distribution type of thing. This particular one is featuring black G10 on the handles, stainless steel liner lock, and the steel is 9CR18 MOB right there. It's running on ball bearings and is a flipper only. Got a stainless steel deep carry clip right here and stainless steel hardware. Taking a look at measurements, it's coming in just slightly shy of 8 inches overall with a blade right on 3.5 inches and a cutting edge that is right about 3.5 as well. Get some caliper measurements here. The handle is 0.47 inches wide. The blade stock is 0.116. So just under an eighth of an inch, and the behind the edge thickness is about 17 thousandths, although that's with a pretty high edge bevel angle. I think it's probably coming in about 22, 23 degrees per side. And the price on this is coming in just about $45. So let's get into it, talk about my likes, neutrals, and dislikes. So likes... I actually, I really like the design and the profile on this. It's different, it's interesting, it's a little unique in terms of the overall design, the handle shape, the blade shape, it kind of has this leaf shape that swells in the middle ever so slightly. slightly. I really like it, it kind of reminds me of that Canadian style belt knife, which has kind of the hump on the back of the blade and a matching hump on the belly. It looks interesting, it's cool, and it's complemented, I think, very nicely by this handle with kind of a similar leafy shape, kind of gets wider in the middle, thin on both ends. I really like the design, and it looks a little different, a little more interesting than a lot of similar budget offerings. My next like is the price. This is a solid price. $45 for this 9CR18 MOV. It's not some 5CR, 3CR junk like that. Pretty decent steel, 9CR is not bad at all. And at this price point, you're getting G10, steel liner lock, solid blade, a very, really pretty nicely well-made knife. I would say it's a solid price for $45. I would not hesitate to pick that up. My next like is this pocket clip. It's a pretty well-done pocket clip. It has a lot of clearance here. It has a decent spring. It's not too heavy, not too light. It looks pretty decent. Nice deep carry, goes all the way to the end of the handle. Well done there. It feels nice in the hand, no ergonomic issues. My only thing that I don't love is that the clip is not recessed into the handle, but at least the screws are recessed into the clip. So they went that far. And at this kind of price on a budget knife, I don't mind that the clip is not recessed. My next like is the handle itself. Very well done handle overall. Ex got really nice ergos. The ergonomics really are excellent in just about any grip. Solid pinch grip here. There's no jimping up here to be digging into your finger as you're doing a pinch grip like this. Hammer grip is solid. It has a nice curve at the back that sits into your hand right here. Very well done. No harsh jimping anywhere. Hammer grip is nice. I don't, I might have called this hammer grip, saber grip is nice. The jimping right here is well placed for your thumb. It's quite a good handle overall. Reverse cut, reverse pinch, all good, very good ergonomics all around on the grips. And then my last like is the overall quality. 
This knife is actually made really, really well. I'm quite impressed with this. There is no play side to side, up or down. The edge is pretty decent. It's not the greatest edge out of the box, but at least it's consistent. The centering is perfect, dead on. Maybe, maybe like a few thousands off to the, the show side, but it's so close that I, I really cannot complain about that. All the edges are finished nicely. There's no burrs, no sharp edges that shouldn't be there. I'm overall really impressed. There's no detent lash. Everything feels good, feels solid, feels quality, and for $45, I'm, I'm very happy with this. Now onto my neutrals, and I have two of those. First is the blade. It's pretty good. I like the shape, but it does have some flaws. In my opinion, it's a little bit thick behind the edge, coming in at nearly 20 thousandths, and that's with a pretty high bevel angle. I wish this were a little bit thinner, maybe 12, 15 thousandths, and take the bevel angle down, maybe to 20, 18 degrees, something like that. That would be fantastic. But as it is, it's really not so bad, and if you want a little more toughness on your blade, this might be a better pick. Then it also misses in terms of the plunge grind and the sharpening joil. There, you can kind of tell there how the plunge grind is really swoopy, and it comes out probably to about right here. It's where the plunge grind really stops. And even if the plunge grind were perfect, the choil would be still be really on the small side. You're going to get one sharpening out of this, and it will already be developing a smile. So just a few minor things on the blade. I wish it were a little bit thinner. And this plunge grind needs to be sharper with a larger choil. That is a very easy fix, though. As you can see, come back here. There's no interface with the stop pin in that choil, so it's going to be really easy to extend this choil if or when you need to. And then my next neutral is the G10 on the handle here. It's pretty good. It feels pretty nice on the flats, actually. Definitely feels a little bit cheap, but not so bad. But it has this texturing around here, which... Kind of looks, it looks pretty nice. Get that in focus. It looks pretty nice, and it is a bit of a change from your standard just plain G10. But it's actually a little bit sharp and abrasive on the edges. So as you're cutting and bearing down, especially here, kind of with your pinky, it does kind of abrade your pinky and poke into your finger there as you're trying to cut things. You can see right, right here on my pinky, you see those red spots. That's kind of that G10 just bearing and kind of poking into my finger, abrading it a little bit right there. So while I do like that, it needs to be softened even more around the edges. And it's kind of, if you're someone who doesn't really like certain tactile feelings, you probably won't like this because it does have a bit of a rough, scratchy texture. Although it is done pretty well overall. That's why it's only a neutral. It's not a huge ergonomic concern, and it is kind of visually interesting. Now, onto my dislikes for this, and I really only have one, and it is the detent, which is just disappointing. It's not an unusable detent. You've seen me flip it out. It's very usable, but it's deeply unsatisfying. It is not a satisfying detent at all. You can see on the closing action, the blade is quite smooth. But the detent is so lazy, it's just really not a crisp detent at all. There's no, yeah, it's a really, really soft break. You know, on a flipper, you want your detent to be a hard break. It doesn't need to be stiff, but it should be crisp. This detent is not at all crisp. And while it is quite easy and pretty reliable to flip it out, it's very, very unsatisfying. And honestly, for a flipper knife, the detent being satisfying is kind of important on it. Flipper on ball bearings, you want a detent that feels nice and satisfying when you deploy it. This detent just doesn't. So that's, that's my dislike, and it's actually my only dislike, because I really do like just about everything else on this, and my other gripes are neutrals at worst. So now let's get into some conclusions. Overall, I really, really like this knife. For $45, it is exceptionally well done. It really is. The ergonomics are great. The design is nice. It's got a little bit of uniqueness. It's an interesting design. It's not every budget knife you see out there. I'm happy with that. The quality is quite good. The material choice is excellent. 
the execution is quite good. My only real gripe is that the detent is on the soft side. It's not satisfying at all, but it's still very usable. It's not an unusable detent by any means. And that's really my only dislike. The other things, with the blade grind being a little thick, the plunge grind not quite getting there, and the texturing around the handle, those are really just neutrals. Not big deals, in my opinion. And if you really wanted to, you could easily soften the edge of these handles with a little bit of sandpaper. That would be no issue at all. It'll take five minutes. So if you're looking for a budget knife of a pretty reasonable size at a super reasonable price, again, $45, I would say this is a really, really solid pick. Your 9CR is going to perform pretty well on the blade. The ergonomics are on point. The design is nice. And that is everything I have to say about this knife. I would love to hear your thoughts about this one down below. Have you gotten one of these? Have you looked at it? Have you passed on it? Anything like that. I would love to know what you think about this. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button if you enjoy knife content, sharpening, all that kind of stuff. And with all that said, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.